point to you that our God, our Father, He is a God of those who knows how to feel gratitude. He is a thanksgiving Almighty God. Amen? Now, I would like us to open the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, in Deuteronomy chapter 16, beginning verses 16 to 17. Okay. Amen. Uh, okay. We must have Bibles. And uh, your Bibles can be electronic <laughs> or what is this? Uh, Bible, really. Now, I'd like us to share our Holy Scriptures because I really would want all of us to read this ourselves personally. Here we go. Deuteronomy 16, verses 16 to 17. Okay. Now, I would like us to read this together. Everyone ready? Amen? Okay. Praise God. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place that He will choose. At the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Booths. They shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that He has given you. Wow! God bless the reading of this word. I'm inviting us, let's commit ourselves, let's bow our heads, we close our eyes, and we are going to pray. Let's talk to the Lord Almighty. Lord, let us be seated. Uh, I must believe that somehow, we got an across already this passage in the Bible. Especially if you try to already scour the Old Testament. And uh, I, I will have to justify, you know, reason brother. Uh, there are plenty of Bible believers who do not want to read the Old Testament because they say uh, they're too deep. I mean, uh, things there are very enigmatic. I mean, my, my bearing cannot so much understand them. No, I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is not just the New Testament. It includes the Old Testament. Now, I can guarantee you, show you two things here. Number one, Anyways, when there are lines in the Bible where you just cannot understand, let it go. I mean, let's just happen. Because when we read the Bible, what is receiving in the faculty of our being, it's more than just our head. It's our soul. Amen? Yeah. Are you still there? Yeah. The Word of God, when we read what reached or to where the Word of God uh, lands, the way the Word of God affects is not in our intelligence. It's not only up to our, our minds. It goes beyond to the recesses of our spirits and our souls. And second, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reason why we have Sunday. Why? Because, for example, me, your pastor, God uses me to explain to you what are the mysteries or oh, what are those deep things the Lord is hiding in the Word that we can understand? And this is what I feel to do this morning. Are you still there? Amen? Amen. Now here, in the passage that we can find, God actually was enjoining the nation of Israel not to appear before the Lord empty-handed. But I will have to explain, ladies and gentlemen, that we cannot be mixed up because they are... There are also a lot of Christians when they got them across this passage, they become offended. Well, they're, they're not already here in Acts. Everyone already in the Acts church are liberal, are generous, are good givers. To God be the glory. Amen? Amen. We love to give. We love to give the Lord. I was to say a while, you cannot love without giving, but you can give without loving. Now, many get offended to this. That is why I will have to explain. The reason why God mandated His people, it's not because only for legalism. But the Almighty are really teaching His people two things here. Now, before I go further, what is enjoin? Enjoin is mandate. Literally, 
command. Don't you know, giving is a command. If we go very strict, especially in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, God was commanding the nation of Israel. He said, none of you, when you come into my presence, when you present yourself, you present your family, do not come only casually. Come to me with something in your hand. Do not appear to me empty-handed. Say the word empty-handed. Now, I tell you, these occasions where the Lord telling His people, when you appear, these are not ordinary days. These are the only three major feasts provided by God in the Holy Scriptures that the nation of Israel were commanded to celebrate once a year. I mean, it wasn't just any ordinary day. These were, according to the Bible, the feasts of the unleavened bread, uh, the Feast of the Weeks, and the Feast of Booths. Well, if uh, you're taking down notes, okay, maybe I can return back to... Okay. Yan, can you help me? Okay. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Yeah. Three major feasts. Annual. Every year. God said all of you men will come to uh, Jerusalem to offer your sacrifices. All men will wear. Uh, by the way, women, women in the uh, Old Testament were excused. They have the choices to either go with their husbands, their, their parents or not. For one reason, they are the ones to keep the little ones and the family home. Because every man, when they go to the altar and offer their sacrifices to God, they were going there representing their family, representing their, uh, their kin or their clan. So the Lord said, in these three special uh, holidays, the feast of the unleavened bread, weeks, and uh, of the boots. The Lord says, I am mandating, I am commanding, I am enjoining. None of you will come or will appear before me casually. Say the word casually. Casually. Casually, literally, without anything in your hand. You must come to me with your, the Bible said, with your ability to offer your sacrifices. Now, I will have to explain what is the background of this passage. Because somebody, uh, not a member from our church, but I heard, they were talking, she went to the church, and so timely, the sermon of the pastor was this passage. And uh, very unfortunate, because situation, she, on, she only had uh, like 20 pesos in her, in her pocket, pamasahe, and uh, a little offering. I'm not sure how the pastor, well, he, the man of God, presented the, the, the message, the sermon. Then what happened to sister was sitting there, sitting there at the back, that her, her recipient brother to the message was instead offensive. Now he was telling, oh, is this pastor telling that God is condemning anybody to come to the church without an offering? Is, is he telling me that I am not worthy to appear before the Lord because I only have papasahe and I've only, you know, a little offering. To, I am not sure how really was the presentation of the sermon. But the point was, the sister was not clarified very well of these passings. And I will attempt to do it this morning by the grace of God. Are you there? Amen? Amen. Now, before it poke somebody's side and or maybe pat somebody's shoulder and tell that brother, tell that sister, Okay, we will understand it today. Come on. <laughs> amen. Amen. Can we give Jesus a clap of praise? Why the Lord telling His people to appear before Him with something really? Two reasons. Number one, because He wanted to teach His people 
to become thankful. He wanted to, you know, uh, inculcate in their hearts and in their minds this one as a value, this one, you know, as an exceptional characteristic. Because perhaps all the rest of the people around, the unbelievers are not doing this. Don't you know, ladies and gentlemen, even up to now, uh, the Jewish people still practice this as something which is their value, really. That any time when they go to a synagogue, or any, anywhere they go, when uh, they are strangers in the place, or when the Lord would really bless them, they will really see to it or find a way, for example, in the synagogue, they, they can give their offering, they can give their tithes. When they go to places where they are strangers, they find ways how they can help the poor in the place. Uh, for example, when they become enriched or they become blessed, which many, um, many Jewish people are, are today, they see to it that they can help the world. They see to it that they can help how many people or how many nations. Why? Because inside of them, it's being inculcated. It's being taught by God. Being passed by one family to another family to another family. Hello? That is why the Lord said, when you come, practice it. I would like to ask you, how do you practice things in your family? How are we practicing things in the church? That the Lord is teaching me. The Lord is telling me. This is the reason why I am sharing this to you. When you go and see the poor, what are the prompts in your heart? How do you talk privately with your, with your spouse? How do you decide with uh, your husband? Or rather, with, with all of the members of the family, when you see the poor, ah, let's not help them. You know, what we have is only for ours. Is that? But when you when you receive the blessings, you would say, Oh, in all in all of the hardships, in all of our difficulties, nobody was around and helped us. Now we have the plenty. It's only us as well to you know to enjoy and uh, really show all of this. Kesibaya those around us. Let's start help them. I like us to look to the next person beside you and tell that next a wrong attitude. Stinginess is really wrong. By all angles, morally, spiritually, and even personally. Girls here, listen, I'm already your dad. When a, when a guy approaches you and tells you, I love you, and you're about to tell him, I love you too, one of the gauge that you are to see, characteristic if he has this or not, is he stingy? If he is, he's not for you. Hello? Are you there? Amen. But if he has a good heart, well, he has the chance. But the other way, boys, when you go for the girls, not when you are 16, okay? Men. Uh, when you're 21, I think, okay. Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> when you go for a girl, check if the girl has a good heart. Check if the girl welcomes this word. See if the girl is granting, uh, I would see if the girl is generous. See if the girl is grateful. Because she is, perhaps she is for you. If not, well, earliest, earliest now that you cannot be hurt, really very worse. <laughs> uh, find the other way. Pray better and pray more. Hello, are you still there? Amen. Here really in Acts. I, I, I would have I would have to really believe and presume by the grace of God that you're not offended. You're not uh, what is this? Receiving the word of God sour, but I will go I will really go to the extra mile. Listen. I will convince you and really persuade you between the two. I will beg of you and really ask of you, being a church, being a family, let's rather become generous than being stingy. Amen. 
Yes, when you keep, you still can retain a little. But that, that a little that you will have, perhaps will just stay only for a while and only for some time. But that little that you have as a result of stinginess will eat, will eat you, will eat your family, will eat your health later and eventually because that's how the Word of God is saying. But being generous, the Bible said, give some. And you know what happened? What we dispersed, what we dispersed abroad will return back to us. God cannot lie. God is true. God is honest to His Word. Now when He said, when we give, it shall be given back to us. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Amen? Amen. There was this passage, I thought I'd share this to you, ladies and gentlemen. In Samuel 9, 7, I would like us to see how indeed this became embedded as a character or as a characteristic to the Jewish people. Are you, are you understanding? Is, is it making sense? Amen? Yeah. I like us. 1 Samuel 9, 7. It reads, Saul said to his servant, If we go, what can we give to the man? The food in our sacks is gone. We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? Saul, the first king of Israel, if you remember. They were deciding to visit the holy man of God, uh, Samuel. Because at the time he wasn't yet the king. Uh, his servant really was uh, convincing, telling uh, Sa uh, Saul, let's try the holy man for a guidance. Now, Saul talked to his servant and he told his servant, how can we go to the prophet? We don't have anything in our hands. Imagine. How can we go to the prophet? The food in our sack was already, I mean, uh, consumed. We have none. I don't think we need or we must, we can go and see the prophet Samuel without something in our hand. Well, make long story short, they found out that they still have some uh, loaves of bread uh, left as their provision. And indeed, they really go. They, they really present them. They really talk and sow the man of God. Even with the handful that they have, nonetheless, they did not go, appear, present them to the prophet without something in their hands. I'd like us to say once again, say gratitude. Come on. Gratitude. Let's give the Lord a couple of praise. And the second why the Lord told His people that when you appear to me in this feast, it wasn't every day, only these three special holidays, you will come to me with something. Because of this reason, God was teaching them about the grace secret to more blessings. Let me, tell, let me ask you, brothers and sisters, people of God, would you like to see your life not just temporarily blessed, but forever blessed? Amen. Not just halfway, not just mostly, but totally and fully blessed. Amen? Amen. Because there are other people, they have money, but they cannot enjoy food because they cannot eat already the food. I mean, they have everything you can name of, but you know, they are sickly. God would like us to have the physical blessings at the same time with our... God would like us to have the literal, literal blessings with our physical being well and spiritually as well spiritually also intact. I mean the balance, everything. Hello, are you still there? Amen? Yeah. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Uh, knowing, knowing prior, also brothers and sisters, before this three annual feast, God was saying to it that the nation of Israel, every single family was blessed. If they were farmers, God was saying to it that all of the crops bore a good harvest. If they were businessmen, God was saying to it that their business did well. 
if they were fishermen, God was saying to it that they had better catch the whole of the year. That is why when they came, when the holy day, you know, arrived, they really cannot make excuses. Lord, I don't think I can be coming to you uh, with something in my hand because I didn't, I didn't have a good harvest. My business did not result so well. Well, I didn't have better catch the whole of this year. No! Are you still there? Amen. Amen. In implying this to us, let me tell you, I'd like to nail now, I'd like to hit now the nails in. Exactly. On December 21, we will have our Thanksgiving Day. And everybody says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our Thanksgiving is not a celebration every day. Our official Thanksgiving, we only celebrate once a year. Isn't it? In as much, I would like to encourage, I would like to really adjure all, if possible, all of us can come. Please. And then, when we come, let us come with our Thanksgiving offering to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, primarily, our Thanksgiving offering is not really that much. Because every brother, every sister in the church is being encouraged to only give a contribution of 80 pesos. I think 80 pesos is not very big. <laughs> we, can, we can give it. Because the whole of the year, you tell me, you stand and you oppose me if God has not been very good to you within this year. Were you healthy the whole of the year? Amen. Did you have something, a promotion within this year? Did you have something, a job for this year? Did you have something, the, Lord protect, the Lord's protection over you that, I mean, the Lord healed you from, from, uh, from your seedbed? The Lord uh, covered you with His precious blood, you know, from almost an accident that, that was to come on you and was to claim your life. But it did not happen. The Lord averted it. For me, I'm so allowed to thank God, personally. I thank God for my daughter. I thank God for my son. I thank God for my family. I thank God for my privilege of serving to Him. I thank God for my privilege of even going back to school. Two more years. You know, when I study, when I memorize, when I feel like my, my body is about to give up, I mean, uh, I mean, information that I'm trying, you know, to place in my memory are too much and beyond my human abilities. I would pose for a while, close my eyes, instead of whining, instead of complaining, I would say, two more years, Lord, two more years. So many that we can be thankful unto the Lord. Now you tell me, you oppose me. If at least God has left you. If at least God has forgotten you. But if not, if you see rather the goodness of the Lord in your life, you have no reasons why, you have no excuses why you cannot appear before the Lord and say thank you. Amen? Yeah. Can we give God a clap of praise? Yeah. Uh, what is this? The people of God were really told by the Lord. They were really enjoined. It was a mandate. It was a command. God telling them, do not appear to me without something. Now I must, I must explain it to you and I did. What are those reasons why God commanded it? Number one, as I said a while, because God was teaching, inculcating, uh, to his people that I mean this to be developed as their char character this to be developed as their value everyone says gratefulness, gratefulness. everyone says gratefulness. gratefulness everyone say gratitude, gratitude. Yeah. and second is the Lord was grace teaching them what is the secret of more blessings the Lord said the Bible said for it is more blessed you give than to receive. Amen? Amen? In fact, I would like to encourage every single member in the church, listen. For example, when you go and eat, you are many. 
and then you have money you know that you have in your pocket do not wait for the rest to draw out and say okay I'll pay for all or I'll pay for you but you know that you have money hello draw out something from your pocket and say even if it's not you to pay everyone but say oh I'll pay for me or oh, I have this some extra become more generous hello amen, amen. Or when you are on a jeepney, you are a student, huh? The rest of the classmates are now drawing uh, Wimsu, Wimsu kids here. I'm, I'm a Wimsu guy also. Uh, house, the Wimsu is only five pesos, I mean. Huh? And classmates, hello. It's, it's like when you go to a, uh, to a fast food or to a restaurant before leaving. You, you leave 20 pesos, you leave 15 pesos. That's what you call. Uh, tips. It's not tipping God. Ah, you, we cannot pay even God Almighty. But there is much on gratitude. Something is very much in grateful people. Can we say down that line? Say something is very much on to grateful people. Come on, say. Something is very much on to great, grateful people. Can we give God a call for praise? I mentioned about my cousin. She had been in the uh, U.S. for at least 30 or 36 years in a U.S. government-run hospital. How hospitals here compared to Western countries like America? Oh, it's, it's not up to the fingertips. My cousin was, uh, you know, working in this hospital for 36, 37 years with, with uh, what is this, uh, with Iran. And everything is free for uh, for a checkup or for a medication, everything beside of their uh, insurance. Then every year they were free for an executive checkup. Now you can say they are the most privileged people, perhaps to be healthy every year. Because, you know, uh, a government-run hospital, I mean, all, all of the apparatus and all of the gadgets and everything, just for a man to be healthy, they have. But you know what? I just but cannot explain. I cannot ask her already because she's now in a coffin. For the past, recently, five successive years, she never submitted to an executive checkup. My cousin now, her last was 63 years old. Hello, Amen. Now five years, when she 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 did submit for her executive checkup, she was observing this coughing. She was coughing. Well, what is cough? Hello, Amen. Amen. What is cough? So after five years, suddenly, on February, she decided for her checkup. And then the doctor was so shocked. He found out some lumps growing all over her lungs, literally covering her lungs. And he found out my cousin was actually silently growing the whole of this time cancer cells in her lungs. Everyone was on a shock, including me here in Zamboanga. Uh, she's uh, in Texas and uh, Zamboanga here, you see the distance and uh, the, the ripple of surprise even reached me because my, my cousin doesn't smoke. Hello? She was married on her late 40s, didn't have a child. That's why we parents, we must thankful to the Lord for our children, amen? And we kids, we are to as well for our parents. Let's give God a clap praise for that. My cousin, for how many months, would have to survive chemotherapy all by herself? Without brothers, without sisters. I don't know with the husband. And then, her last wish, she talked with her doctor. 
I wanna go home. There's always a home we can retreat every time when we are sick. Do you know? Home doesn't necessarily be a, what is this, uh, a fancy house. Home is where family is. And beside in that, Axe is always a home. Amen. 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 Praise God. September she went home. She never reached Christmas. She never reached even December. On a 5.30 afternoon, November 30, she gave up her last. Two weeks when she arrived, she could not eat the food already. The doctor gave, gave them uh, two choices, to poke and place a hose for her intake through her throat here, or to slice her side and connect, you know, some hoses for her food, ground food, uh, to be induced, or, uh, to be induced through the hoses straight to her. I can imagine. That's why, thank God we are healthy. Amen? Amen. Try to see if you have hoses around. Come on. <laughs> Praise be to the living God. Every time with Sister Wilma, I really love this sister so much. Sister Will, I want you to know, I, Sister Del and I love, love you so, so much. Not because of what you're giving in the church, simply because of what you are. Sister Wilma has a lot of sickness. But the Lord is keeping her. The Lord is blessing her. Every time she goes here in the church, it's like climbing Mount Everest. Hello? Yeah. It's easy for her because she has an enlarged eye. But you know what? She loves to do it. At least once once a month. But it's her second today. Oh no. Today is, uh, what is this? December already is the wheels. But please join us. Even if not the whole of the evening, the whole of the afternoon on Thanksgiving Day. Even if on one hour system wheels. Thanksgiving. Praise be to the living God. Are you still there, Amen? Tell me, I'm not going to scare you. Do you know that we still can go through the whole of 2014? Ah, 2015? It's the reason why, brothers and sisters, we need the greater guidance, the greater blessings, the greater graces, the greater protection, and everything for 2014. Yeah. Nobody can boastfully, nobody can uh, braggartly say, ah, ako na gundi. Akong kaliwan superman. Sayo ito. El manog still ni primo akil. Su, su, ah, Anting-anting. Yan di akil kumiko makin umpoko lang. Pero siya na yun. No? Nige kita pwede magbugal mga brothers and sisters. Solamente por kita kinara. Solamente por kita pwede tap bibi. Yan siya na tap puwersa. Buen salud. E buen cuerpo. Que el Señor ya dale si kunapun. Amen. Entendes? The second is, great brothers and sisters, it's nice, better and beyond compare if we are generous. Amen. It's really nice, better and beyond compare if we are generous. And lastly, God wants His children to give. God wants His children to be giver to. Both man and God remember always liberal people. I like us not to read this last line. The Council 3, 1, 2, 3. Come on. God wants His children to be givers to. Both man and God remembers always liberal people. Liberal or giver people. Diba? Sino yung matulungin? Na alala talaga natin, na alala, maalala talaga natin si Manny Pacquiao. 
Di ba? Binalikan talaga niya yun ang aruga sa kanya nung siya ay nandun sa nagsimula pa, mga 94, 93 sa kanyang karyer, karera sa boxing. Binalikan talaga ni Manny Pacquiao. Eh ngayon, si Manny Pacquiao nag-donate man. Kasi nung last fight niya, he gain again at least 1 billion peso. Oh, grabe no, pag ikaw man lang, <laughs> inisip ko, Brother James, sabi ko, pag, mag, mag ganong klaseng trabaho na 1 billion isang laro, siguro mag-join ako boxing. <laughs> Can you still imagine? I was just, uh, I was just a bizarre thought. No? Isang boxing mo lang, hindi abot ng dalawang oras, ikay makakuha ng isang billion. Nasabi ko, lalaro siguro ako. Pero tingnan ko yung sarili ko. Ha? <laughs> Sa iba ni Algeri, it was worth it. As aning na basis bumaksak ako kay Pacquiao, pero he gained uh, billions of dollars. Now, ngayon si Mayweather, he's being offered 100 million dollars. If you times it, 42 here in uh, tawag, tawag ito, Philippine money. That's why they were there really alluring me, Mayweather. Ngayon si Manny Pacquiao, nag-donate man ng 260, hindi pala donate, nagbigay ng time siguro, I don't know, 295 o 265 million peso. Ah, yung na, kasi pinost ma, ah, nabalita man, ah, yung mga tao nito, yung sa social network, talaga umalma sila. Sabi ko, itong mga tao ang to, karang karang talaga to, hindi to generous, hindi to givers. Eh, ganun talagang mangyayari pag mahal na mahal mo ang Panginoon. Amen. Malala, malala ng tao at saka malala ng Diyos ang mga tao na giver at saka generous. There were these two people in the Bible. One was Mary of Bethany. The other was uh, Cornelius. Cornelius Franz. Uh, Si, Cornelius, si Franz kasi ang tunay ng pangalan itong batang to, Franz Cornelius, no? Si Mary of Bethany, bigla man lang pumasok sa last supper ni Jesus, eh nag-iyakan yung lahat eh. Sabi pa ni Juan, Lord, sabi mo sa amin, kung totoo ba, sino talaga ang magbudhi? Ang budhi, bisaya na budhi eh. <laughs> sino ba ang tatry doon sa iyo? Sabi sa iyo, pag kino, Isulpik ayaw na isikrito na mo. Kinsa ba o gayon ang mubudhi? Kanin mo? Panginoon, huwag mo nang itago po sa amin sino ba talaga ang tatay doon sa iyo. Sabi ni Jesus, sabay, kumuha siya sa kanyang pan. Ito'y tinuslob. Tinuslob mo yun sa Tagalog. <laughs> Sinausaw. Sa vino, sabay sila na nagsawsaw ni, ni Judas. Nagpanggaan pa nga yung kanilang pan. Sabi ni Jesus, Kien ay yan sawsaw punto kumigo na vino. El ay el gente. Naintindi kay Elios mga apostoles? Si si Juan si ah uh, Judas intelligent eh. Ya wili ba? Yo kita grande si Jesus. Nale si Cabal Juan el Sena. Yan lang pala el Juan el uh, el Puerta. Ya salele. Ya buscale con caipas y anas. Ya vendele el di suyo amo si Jesus con 30 plata. 30 pieces of silver. 30 pedas of plata. Imagine. And then suddenly, the atmosphere, the thickness of the holiness and sacredness of that moment was so thick. Suddenly, it's a woman carrying an alabaster box. Her name was Mary from Bethany. She broke the seal of the alabaster box and put it at the feet of Jesus without saying words. She's starting to cry fiercely for Jesus. 
and she used her hairs after rubbing the feet of Jesus after washing the feet of the Lord she was using her hairs to dry the feet of Jesus and the Bible said that spike guard cost a year's wage it really was very expensive Judas said sayang naman sana yung perfume na yun imagine thousands of peso ibinenta na ang sana yan tsaka yung proceeds ibinigay dito sa offering sabi ng Bible hindi concerned si Judas sa pagkat yung offering tinutulong sa mga mga poor poor people hindi siya concerned doon sabi ng Bible he said it because since from the very beginning he has been stealing money from the offering basket Hello? So, lalabas talaga yung ano, kahit paano tatagutaguhin natin yung motifs natin sa heart po natin, lalabas yung saka lalabas yan kasi i-squeeze at saka i-squeeze talaga yun ng Lord. Hello? Amen? Sabi ni Jesus, leave this woman. For this woman is preparing my burial. And I tell you, what the act of this woman will be remembered forever. Say the word remembrance. Remembrance. Kaya nga, sa, si Mary, Mary Bethany, dahil inaalala talaga ng daming mga tao, meron pong isang author ng libro. Siya po'y lumika ng isang katang isip. Ang tawag niya is uh, The Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code. Ang sabi nila, si Maria, Mary of Bethany daw, who was at the same time, also Miss Mary of Mary Magdalene, is the wife daw of Jesus. At sila po yung nagkaanak, at ang anak ni Jesus, yun daw ang Holy Grail. Mali ho yun. Sabihan po natin, mali ho yun. Ang tawag nun, sabi ni Pablo, they were the agnostic of his time. Na, they twist the Bible, and very much, what is this? Blaspheming Jesus and blaspheming the gospel. At ang pangalawa po, si uh, Cornelius, si Franz Cornelius. Sabi pa ng Panginoon, your alms and your prayer became a memorial to my presence. Talaga, no? Babasahin ko ulit. Both men and God remember always liver of me. Amen. Amen. I would like to close my sermon. Are you receiving today the word of God? Amen. Huh? Our life of generosity will become an example to our children. Talaga. Susundan na tayo. Tay tayong mga parents at one day, pag mag tayo, kayo, masundan tayo ng ating mga anak. Yung gitang tingnan no, yung mga anak natin, tatakbo yan dito, galing sa, dun sa loob. Mama, offering ko. Eh, paano yan? Pag sabi, ay, huwag yan ibigay 500. Mala siya na yung malaki. Yung 50 na lang. Eh, narinig yung mga anak. Ah, ganun pala. Paglaki niyan. Ganun din. Ayaw ng 500. Ayaw na si Ninoy. Ang ibigay si ano lang, Sino yun si... Si 50? Yung 50 lang. In town, kaluoy ni Ninoy. Kaya na hanggang garot si Ninoy gumawa ng patin. <laughs> Then, iniisip ko is ngayong Thanksgiving. Talaga, I am asking us. And uh, we are encouraging all of the members in the church. We are missing brothers and sisters. Let us come. Let us show our gratitude to God on December 21. It be 2.30 in the afternoon, amen? And uh, we have one little simple contribution of 80 peso. And uh, 80 peso is nothing, I tell you. It's only a two or three or five day or a week load to many of us. It's nothing. But brothers and sisters, it will be our way to say thank you, Lord. Are you blessed? Amen? Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. Let's all stand up. Okay, we're gonna pray. Let us pray individually. Let us pray for our, uh, for each and every one's 
home and family. Then we come to God and ask Him for blessings. Let us ask for the blessings of God, okay? Let us bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Let's raise both of our hands. Talk to God in a personal manner. Ask Him to bless you. Ask Him to bless you. Lord, bless my family. I pray that you will bless our church. Look at, look at me, Lord. Look at this, Lord. Because when you, when you do, you see yourself. You created us in your image and in your likeness. And you have said that we are your workmanship. We are your masterpiece. Lord, enough of our difficulties. Enough, oh Lord God, of our hardships. Enough, oh Lord God, of enough of our poverty, oh Lord God. Enough of our struggles. I'm praying, I'm asking you that you will bless all of your people, bless everyone. I pray, oh Lord God, in the whole of the levels of our lives. Not only, not only, oh Lord God, spiritually or emotionally or physically, but Lord, the whole of our being that you are going to bless us. So, as your people are standing right now into your presence, as each of us, oh Lord God, are standing, representing our hopes and our family, bend from your presence, bend from your throne and see what are those needs. Bend from your throne, throne and see, oh Lord God, what are those insufficiencies. I pray proof to your people, show to your people how good indeed you are, how gracious indeed you are to all of us. We lift you up, we worship you. Come on for a while, let's remain in the presence of God for a while. God is blessing us. Come on, can we... Lift both of our hands up to God. Now just for a while, and by faith, tell God, I receive, oh Lord God, what you have got for me. I receive by faith. Receive by faith, Lord, what you have got for me. And then you begin to thank God and also worship Him. Oh, in you I live, you I move. I pray for your consecration. Forgive us from all of our iniquities and our sins. Enable us, O Lord God, to partake. Give us the grace. As we will do, O Lord God, here, before us on the altar, the cups and the bread. May you also, O Lord, come. Consecrate and sanctify them. Blessing even all your people. In Jesus' beautiful name. Amen.